let's kickstart our very first panel discussion on the role of digital innovation to address the gaps in O2O retail and e-commerce. We're going to cover topics such as accelerating cross-border business growth through bridging online shopping with offline experience, capitalizing on product and corporate innovation to drive business differentiation and overcome digital disruption and also developing capital raising strategies to drive expansion and internationalization. I'd like to now introduce our panelists. First, we have Gideon Lin, the CEO and co-founder of Bloom This Malaysia. Bloom This is an e-commerce that delivers handcrafted designer flowers on demand or via subscription. Bringing his experience from the brick and mortar floristry business, Gideon is innovating the way for people to create beautiful moments by delivering flowers. In 2015, he and his wife Penny co-founded Bloom This with the emphasis on improving the entire flower delivery experience. By leveraging technology and innovating every aspect of the business, Bloom This is growing rapidly and leading the way in disrupting the fragmented flower industry. And next we have Joshua Liu, the founder and owner of Espresso Lab Malaysia, a prominent homegrown integrated specialty coffee chain in Malaysia. Prior to joining Espresso Lab as a co-founder in 2012, Joshua had years of experience in international commercial trading businesses, where he gained expertise in sales, marketing, and business development. Under stewardship of Joshua Partners, Espresso Lab successfully implemented business licensing model and grew from a specialty coffee startup in 2011 to a household brand with more than 30 locations and outlets across Malaysia and Singapore by 2015. Besides his work in Espresso Lab, Joshua is dedicated to inspiring and assist young budding entrepreneurs making an impact on the entrepreneurial system. Next, we have Boon Kim San, the head of digital business and innovation enterprise banking of FN Bank Barhat, Malaysia. He has experience in managing digital transformation for enterprise business divisions in FN Bank Barhat. It's more than 20 years in implementing technology, digital customer experience, and team management. Boon is fueled by his passion in connecting business and digitalization. He considers himself as a student in this field, always keeping track of technology trends and how to connect both into daily business activities. And he always believes that life can be functional without digital technology. And his hunger for knowledge and beliefs to turn technology into lifestyle has contributed into most of recent success in Effin Bank Berhad. There, he's leading an award-winning mobile application development called SME Colony. Let's put our hands together and welcome our panelists on screen. Hi, everyone. Let's welcome our speakers for today's topic. It's a very interesting topic on the world of digital innovation to address the gaps in auto retail and e-commerce. Thank you guys for joining us today. We have with us here, Joshua, Gideon, and Boon. So, you know, share with us uh, just a quick introduction. Um, you know, how are you guys keeping up as of late in your business? Let's start with Joshua. Hi everyone, uh, doing well. Uh... Malaysia has just started to open up uh, their economy and uh, we're, we're seeing the COVID numbers go down. So uh, we're busy maybe um, planning uh, how to restart some of our uh, locations and our outlets. Um, and we're seeing a little, a little bit more uh, economic activities taking place. Uh, so, so just uh, preparing the team for that uh, as, as well as it's the year end. As, so traditionally, uh, retail businesses uh, look forward to the year end. So we hope it'll be a good one. Mm. All right. How about yourself, Gideon? Um, so far, so good. Actually, we um, we are expanding. So we've just actually moved into our new uh, new facility, uh, and I I think that uh, there's still a lot of challenges uh, ahead. Of course, there's still uncertainties, but uh, I think the future is still quite promising. So uh, yeah, really excited, and uh, like Joshua said, looking forward to the year end as well. Mm. And how about booing yourself in Effin Bank? 
Uh, this year is quite uh, it's quite challenging for actually for Artin Bank. Uh, it's to basically to support our customers and also to support the government in terms of all the initiatives. So we in terms of Artin Bank, we will always uh, be there for our customer and we also aim for become the banks of choice for SME and especially uh, for those uh, range in, in startup business. So that's that's basically fundamentally on our focus. Mm, I see. So to Gideon and Joshua, a question for both of you. Uh, share with us the transitions you've been through in your business as you catch up with the digital wave. Um, let's start with Joshua first. Well, uh, transition. So maybe I'll just share a little story uh, uh, what I went through this year and, uh, and I, will call, I will term it an accidental transition, right? Um, so we all know that uh, the world was hit with uh, COVID in 2020 and then economies around the world, a, a lot of places were shut down, right? Uh, so shutdown was a, was a new way of life for a lot of countries. And in Malaysia, we were, we were shut down, um, uh, I think, up to May, towards the end of May or June, uh, uh, where, where the government allowed us to start to gradually open up a little bit, right? Uh, and, and when, and when the, when the, when the economy opened up again, this was this was back in in probably June twenty twenty. When it opened up again, uh, as a coffee shop, uh, as a, co a chain of coffee stores, uh, we experienced a revenge spending. People just went out uh, to to spend again, and and uh, you know people were just happy to be out of their homes uh, uh, again, right? And so we saw numbers, uh, sales numbers, shot up in uh, July, uh, July, August, and September. Um, in fact, even more than pre-COVID, right? Um, but the situation in Malaysia was when uh, there was a uh, there was a particular there was a, a, a an election, a state election in Sabah, and and that drove new COVID numbers, and and, and I think the government started shutting down uh, um, uh, movement. I mean, they, they introduced something called the movement control order, and then uh, in in uh, October itself, uh, Klang Valley was shut down, and towards the end, and, and it was it was very tough for a lot of businesses. Uh, now I'm looking back one year ago, towards the year, and it was so bad, right? And by sometime in uh, early this year, January and February, things were got to 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 quite serious, and uh, the the government in, even introduced uh, uh, an emergency. Uh, never before since, uh, you know, that was only once it happened in our country uh, uh, after the in independence. And it, it was so serious that um, I was starting to be very worried. You, you see, um, rentals have not been paid. Uh, a lot of staff salaries were, were outstanding. And, and uh, I'm, I'm very blessed with a team of uh, staff who, who told me hey, uh, they were willing their salary. Uh, we, as a company, we did not want to take the tough uh, option of cutting salaries or, or we, we try our best not to lay off anyone. Uh, but if anyone wanted to leave, we were fine with it. But for, for, for those who stayed, uh, they were gracious enough for us to, to, to say, hey, we are willing to defer. But by, by the end of February, I was getting a bit desperate myself uh, because how much more money uh, can I pump in on my own uh, and, and you know, it, and so in in that moment of desperation, uh, one one evening I, I wrote a post uh, uh, on my Facebook. And so this is on my personal Facebook, nothing to do with Espresso. Like we, we did not put it on the on the company page or anything. It was just a personal post of mine. And I said, look, um, this is this is this is our desperate times. I am asking for help, right? Uh, and most of you know that I own the business, but I'm not asking for charity. So don't 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 pity me and don't you know, just just you know do charity and give free money or, or whatever. Um, I have this product, uh, and this is this is called the coffee sachet. So uh, for the audience, I just want to take a bit of time to to share what it is. Um, basically, it is like a tea bag, but with coffee, and you just immerse it in hot water and and, and you make coffee out of it. So this product is uh, shelf steady. Uh, this is something that we can actually ship. To, to consumers and they can enjoy it at home. So this product, I said, look, I have 10,000 boxes. I just, I just wanted to put a goal to it, like, you know, on the, on the Facebook post. I said, look, I have 10,000 boxes. Um, please help me out by buying it. You would have uh, uh, helped me through this difficult time. You know, just, just, just help me out by buying my product. Um, within an, an hour, the post went viral. And uh, I, I did 
when I say viral, by midnight, I had a lot of uh, uh, WhatsApp messages, like hundreds of them. Um, but to cut the long story short, uh, uh, these are all documented and <laughs> we, we came out in, in, in a few uh, media, uh, they wrote about this. Um, by, by the third day, I think uh, there was about 10,000 shares in various channels. Uh, and I've got people calling me from all uh, <laughs> across the world, basically. Australia, New Zealand, America, Europe, Singapore, a lot of uh, people from Singapore, and uh, obviously Malaysia. And what really touched me was uh, by the end of seven days, I did not just sell 10,000 boxes, but I sold 20,000 boxes of, of, of this coffee. And, and there was a, a huge injection of cash from the sales. Uh, it, it did not solve all my problems, but it helped pay a, a lot of bills. And so that's why I term this uh, as, as an accidental jump into uh, digitalization, e-commerce, and, 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 and the likes of it, because we, we never had... Uh, much uh, digital footprint uh, because um, uh, uh, there wasn't a need that there was a, a negligible uh, home-based market which so we serve a lot of uh, uh, pre-COVID we serve a lot of customers that actually walk in so this was what happened and now from then onwards uh, from March till now uh, I am kind of pivoting uh, the company from being a, a traditional brick and mortar uh, a business to something that uh, I just found out that it is known as uh, O2O, online, uh, uh, online to offline, where we have a bit of a hybrid. Yeah. So that, that was the highlight of this year, the business. And, 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 and it, it is quite, a, quite an interesting time, uh, quite, quite eventful and quite uh, overwhelming as well for me. Mm, fantastic. And how about yourself, Gideon? Uh, well, basically for us, um, I think uh, a lot of ups and downs as well, uh, really inspired by uh, what uh, Joshua has shared, right? I think for us, it's um, we set ourselves to uh, be digital first uh, ever since we started uh, Bloom This in 2015. It was already an e-commerce. Uh, we deliberately just kept it as e-commerce. We don't have any uh, retail uh, stores or anything like that. It's, it's all uh, through customers uh, when buy products from us through uh, the website. Um, and as we grow along the journey, we find that um, operationally it's actually very difficult to uh, manage at scale. Um, to achieve operational excellence, it's, it's very challenging, especially when we are delivering flowers and perishable products. And uh, it's also uh, we need to deliver it very timely. It is for someone's special uh, moment, special occasion. But um, the mission of Bluntis has always been creating moments of happiness. And so... Um, what we, what we do is that um, we, we actually invested a lot in uh, uh, technology, especially on operation uh, and how technology can enable our operations. So actually, pre, even pre-pandemic, um, uh, we've always uh, looked at, uh, you know, how can we um, uh, scale up logistics, uh, production, and, you know, inventory management and all this um, operational boring stuff, right? Uh, but when we got hit, by the pandemic in, uh, in 2020, actually, um, uh, we, we were shocked as well. I mean, nobody uh, prepared for this, right? I think the um, entire business was like uh, completely on a standstill and uh, we were also shocked. We also don't know what to do. I think uh, most of us also face this. Like, we, we've been through this. All of us have our fair share story through that. But how, what, what we did was that um, when we understand, um, you know, what, what um, when, the, when the government were clearer on uh, what was allowed, and uh, how we could uh, maneuver around the, the uh, lockdown situation, um, we could very quickly uh, switch on our business operation again because a lot of what we do is already uh, very digital from the way how we acquire customers to the way how we um, run our processes. Um, you know, there is, uh, there is very little uh, in terms of contact with customers because we don't have uh, retail stores and whatnot. So customers just buy online and it, uh, it kind of like... Um, we were able to uh, quickly fit into the situation. And so I think um, uh, from then on, I wouldn't say there is uh, a smooth sailing also. It's actually a lot of challenges. Um, we managed to scale up towards the end of uh, 2020, um, but with scale, actually, um, we hit a lot of operational um, uh, roadblock, lah, supply chain issues. Uh, we had a lot of supply chain issues because 
flowers was uh, quite difficult to move uh, from from uh, Cameron and even uh, import, we cannot get import flowers, uh, supply chain issues and whatnot. So um, we had to uh, you know be creative lah in the way how we um, how we solve this kind of uh, supply chain issues, supply supply chain problems. And so what we did is actually we expanded our categories to beyond flowers. Uh, we had uh, cakes, we've got ice cream, you know, the food categories, hampers. Um, we, went in, we, we went to plants, balloons, um, these artisanal gifts and whatnot. So the, the, the products actually uh, expanded, the product range actually expanded. And, uh, you know, basically we engulfed the entire spectrum of gifting. And it actually worked because um, people were kind of stuck at home and they still got their celebrations. They got their um, birthdays and whatnot to, to celebrate with their loved ones. Um, and I guess Bloom this offer that uh, their service uh, to uh, deliver on demand, um, uh, you know, a, a, a nice package of, uh, of um, goodies, I would say, right? Comes with flowers and cakes and ice cream and whatnot. And um, that actually helped. Uh, so... So I guess yeah, maneuvering that whole that that whole um, uh, I wouldn't say pivot, but actually transformation uh, to adapt to the 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 needs of the time. Um, I, I think uh, I must give credit to the team as well. Uh, we were uh, moving as as quickly as we can, learning as fast as we can, and then just executing as as quickly as we can. Um, and and so I think uh, that helped. Um, yeah. All right, thanks for sharing that. Uh, both of you have shared insights into how the business pivoted. Uh, you moved into O2O. Uh, for Gideon, you started digital first, but also did face a standstill during a period of time due to regulations or the pandemic. And during this period, both of you found ways to overcome them. And in fact, you expanded your product categories. And also, you know, um, we went into B2C products as well for Joshua. Fantastic. And congrats on that. Um, so this is like opportunities as we go through adversities as well. So how about yourself, Boon? Share with us, you know, what are some of the trends that you have observed or the common challenges uh, in the retail or e-commerce um, space where, you know, you have served some of the clients in this uh, industry, especially during these difficult times? How did they overcome digital disruption? Yeah. Like Joshua mentioned, right, the, the MCO really hit us uh, in terms of Malaysia very, very hard. So um, that particular um, that particular uh, period, right, uh, actually hit the conventional retailer very, very hard because they do not have any um, platform to basically distribute the, their, their products, right? So in terms of the challenges, the, more, the few things that, that uh, they are lacking off right now is basically the, the digital disruption. So from of the big uh, e-commerce out there. So if you're not in the game, then they, they basically can eat you out very quickly. So that, that's the first thing that uh, basically conventional retailer uh, is experiencing right now. And, and the next thing is uh, if they are in that, that space already, right? So, so uh, they need to basically find uh, technology to really support them. Like for example, Gideon, like he's, he started with e-commerce straight away. So he already invested in technologies. So, but, but technology, you have to find a very suitable technology to your product. Not every technology out there is suitable for you. But that saying that it's, it's, it's not a, a no place, but it's actually an open space. If you look thoroughly, there's actually uh, things that is basically free and basically cheap for you to basically dive in. And, and of course, the, the challenges of maintaining your customer for conventional retailer also is quite a big challenges. And from there, from that particular summary, right, you you basically face uh, challenges of about revenue. You, you can't really um, you can't really manage your cash flow. Those those are the the peak challenges for the commercials. But for as for e-commerce that, that we observe, right, um, since they are they, they have the platform, right, but they, they also have a few few key things that they, they need to focus on, like how to attract customers that really pay. Right, just not customer that just browse your your uh, your product. Those those are things that they need to focus on how how to convert that into paying customer rather than uh, they they just put a product and they just browse and then that's the end. Right, and of course 
you need to focus on uh, those retailers, like online retailers have to focus on customer experience to basically bring them to, to another uh, level where they can really be comfortable about purchasing something online, right? Because pre-pandemic, uh, pre-COVID, those are the things that people do not really uh, accept. That, that's what, what uh, I, my personal observation, right? I, I don't really shop online. But when COVID really hit, right, that, that really changed the whole customer uh, experience. You, you don't have any choice but to go to um, those uh, online platforms to be acquire, right? not only for your daily essential products, but also like food. Like you can get delivery food to your to your uh, to your restaurant to the house uh, quite immediately, right? Now even your groceries, it, you can you can do that as well. So those are things that um, customer is basically customer experience where they can acquire anything that they needed uh, by the click of finger through the mobile phones. So so if you got that if you got that platform, you got the customer experience. Of course, the next thing is to to build your customer loyalty. If you have bunch of customers is going to support you, always supporting you, right? So those those are valuable, high valuable customers that that will basically help the business to grow to the next level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, like um converting the like I mentioned just now, converting the, the shoppers into paying customer, it requires um data. Data that if you are in a conventional retail uh, uh section right you, you most probably the data is it's either um, it's very manual or you don't have any platform to help you to, to uh, synthesize or analyze those data, right? So, so those are things that, uh, that can be, they can basically, uh, basically the, the, the commercial retailer have challenges with compared to the e-commerce where they can basically, uh, e-commerce e uh, retailer can basically synthesize and they can also do targeting those uh, very modern digital marketing kind of, kind of uh, a marketing strategy. So it's, it's very different. So um, so those, those are things that uh, e-commerce uh, need to focus on. And of course, the, the last thing about uh, the challenges for e-commerce is, is basically the competition, right? Uh, price and uh, free shipping, of course, uh, shipping fees is always the, the thing that the consumer always will think about, um, maybe some cashbacks. So those are the, the uh, things that Commonly, um, retailer will have challenges with, and they also require to seek some form of uh, help or attention. But in, in like per se, those part of those challenges, there's always a solution out there. And like I mentioned just now, the solution can be can be free, and it can come with very minimal cost. You just need to look into how to do you um, plan your uh, business strategy. And of course, the eventually have to plan your financial strategy. Yeah. I see. Thank you for sharing this, uh, Boon. You, you shared quite a number of areas from the technology side to data, mm. segmentizing, analyzing data, doing your retargeting for digital marketing as well, understanding competition. And um, if you go online, what are some of the perks to give the customers to retain them, to get them to buy? Wow. And um, so to both of you, Gideon and Joshua, what are some of the innovative ideas you have implemented in your business that have uh, failed or succeeded? share with us. Let's start with Gideon first, followed by Joshua. Uh, failed or succeeded? <laughs> like, I, I think um, we, I, I think, okay, we, we, try, we try many things. Uh. The, the key is really about uh, rapid uh, testing. Um, I, 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 I think um, importantly is to uh, just put maybe 10% of your effort or uh, your resources in uh, trying something first. Um, and then uh, see whether that things actually pick up or not before you actually double down on it. Um, I would say one of the things that we um, we tried was actually the food category. Um, when we when we were when we were uh, um, starting it uh, before the pandemic, we were already uh, delivering some uh, cakes. We took some photos, we delivered some cakes, and we see whether it actually uh, we can actually do the logistics or not. Um, that was actually uh, uh, before the before the pandemic, uh, but when the pandemic hit, we said that okay, yeah, that's an area that we want to focus and double down on, and so actually we onboarded more uh, uh, cake uh, cake companies, uh, uh, cake brands, and then uh, ice cream brands, and then we started to um, um, work with them, actually collaborated with them, 
So I, I guess that um, uh, testing first is important. Like just, you know, uh, just uh, see whether you can actually, uh, you know, do the logistics and, you know, for, for us is to see whether we can actually handle it uh, um, well or not first. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of uh, trial and error. Yeah, rapid yeah. testing. And how yeah. about yourself, Joshua? Well, um, I think there wasn't any uh, failed experiment because we didn't even try. <laughs> Sim simply because when, when it was locked down, okay, we were one of the essential, as, as an F&B, we were one of the essential services that were allowed to operate. Uh, but all, one of the things is uh, out of the fear of uh, uh, our, our employees uh, contracting the virus and we did not want to expose them. The other thing was also the fact that we didn't feel that uh, people would go out to take away. So that when dining was not allowed, uh, we feel like, you know, coffee is, is an experience, right? Uh, uh, people don't just go there for a functional cup of coffee, you know, uh, because I just need caffeine. Uh, that has to be, uh, uh, that, that issue has to be solved by the fact that people buy coffee and drink at home. Now, if they are to go to a coffee shop, they do want to sit down and so that we made a decision not to, not to open. So, but if you ask me what, innovation or what new thing we try well I, uh, again uh, it is still that sachet thing which i said earlier uh we we we, we kind of uh rush out a a, a, pro, a a coffee in in a different format which people can enjoy at home the other thing that we are trying out is also a, a capsule a capsule based coffee which can fit into uh, various uh machines out there so to be to to be able to say Okay, now let's look into coffee in its various formats that we can actually, uh, I call them the shelf steady products or FMCG uh, type products, which I can actually deliver. Uh, and I, uh, I think probably one of the way, one of the innovation that I needed to do was just to innovate the way I think about uh, 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 delivering the product. Um, when, when I came up with this product, I actually had a lot of opportunity to to put it in a lot of other brick and mortar stores, you know, uh, um, I, I had friends who, who, who own convenience stores, uh, um, the traditional supermarkets and, and hypermarkets. And, and I realized, um, I think the still the cheapest uh, uh, distribution channel would be online. And, and I think uh, Gideon knows this uh, very well. Uh, all the costs would be on marketing. And I said, hey, let's just spend all on marketing because the product is done in uh, done and dusted the, the product is something that is not a problem after all so uh, uh, so I, I, I dive myself into uh, immerse myself into learning about digital marketing performance marketing uh, you know ads and, and taking better uh, still learning uh, taking better videos and, and, and photos of the products and, and, and stuff like that and, and we realize actually the word of mouth is not we realized that we were reminded once again that word of mouth marketing is still uh, one of the most powerful ones uh, with, with regards to, to consumer products. Huh? Yeah. As you share about marketing, how has the way of doing marketing changed, you know, throughout the years? Um, and what do you think is the next wave coming? Gideon, any thoughts or, or Joshua? Yes, go ahead. Maybe I just follow up on what I, I just uh, shared. Uh, I, 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 I think uh, uh, digital is here to stay. I mean, this is, this is, people have been talking about this even pre-COVID, but um, like I said, uh, we were in a situation where there, there wasn't uh, much need for it because, uh, the, you know, uh, but now um, I think every other store, every other business, every other industry needs to embrace uh, digitalization. So, so uh, marketing in... Uh, in its various forms and formats, the fundamentals don't change. Your product still needs to be good. People still need to, you know, but to get the message out there, I think it's still all about uh, um, uh, uh, honest, credible uh, communication. Honest, credible communication. So when someone, in my case, when someone has tried the coffee and they said, hey, this is good, I want to come back again. So we try to encourage them to, 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 repeat what they uh, what they experience to their families their friends or or you know people you know and how to get that message across using the digital tools that's available yeah right how about yeah. yourself Keaton? yeah sure yeah I, I can absolutely agree with what uh, joshua say la. you know the fundamentals of your product and your experience uh is the first thing that uh we need to ensure first if not uh if we invest a lot in marketing 
Um, and when the customers, when you can, you're so good that you can bring customers in. And when the customers actually finally experience your service of your product one time, and they know that, eh, what's so great about this, right? Uh, you know, uh, you, you say this and you advertise this, but actually, no, it doesn't look like that or it doesn't feel that way. Uh, then actually you deter the customers away. In fact, you can even deter your customers to your competitors or, you know, uh, it's, it's really, a, the bad experience is a, a problem. Yeah. So I, I think the first really most important thing to invest in is to uh, create um, a great customer experience. And then when you create great customer experience, I think word of mouth will go, people will, will, will yeah. share about you, you know, your reviews will be good. And then people will know, hey, actually this is a good company or a good product or, you know, a good brand. Um, and so then the other situation comes in when you start scaling, then can you upkeep that experience? Let's say you start to deliver thousands in a day. Can you still upkeep that, that experience uh, to your customers? Uh, but but it, back to the questions about has marketing changed? I think uh, my observation is that um, it's getting more noisy. Everybody is competing for your attention on this, your the devices or, that we are spending our time in. It's getting very noisy and it's not, um, uh, you know, people are getting very creative with, uh, with the way how they create content. Um, so that, that will still be there. It's really important to story tell uh, about, um, okay, let's say we really finally created a great product. Uh, but what we learned is that uh, the storytelling of that, uh, of the product, the value proposition uh, of that product, it's, it's very important uh, to, uh, to get the, the viewer, the consumer, ultimately the user, like, if let's say they're seeing it from a phone or anything like that, to understand what, uh, what is it that they're seeing. The challenge now is that uh, you only got very short, uh, you know, few seconds <laughs> to get that, to get the, 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 the viewer to understand what is it and to get attracted and to know more. And so actually, um, I think Yusam Boom was talking about, you know, um, understand um, the, the e-commerce funnel, uh, it's really important one action leading to the other, right? The first action in marketing, the first action when they see your ad or, or they, they see a, a, a social post or what is to take that first click, that action to come in to understand, you know, what, what is it that, uh, what's, oh, this is really interesting. I really want to know more. And then when they come in and it's actually leading uh, your, your customers into the funnel. So I think um, that don't, the fundamental don't change, but it's getting uh, highly competitive and uh, we really need to be more and more creative in storytelling. I see. So it doesn't stop at uh, TikTok. Facebook is passe, right? And then you go Instagram and now it's TikTok. What's next? Any ideas? <laughs> I'm screaming. Metaverse, I don't know. Metaverse, <laughs> right? That's next 5G. And then you, you could see your, your uh, store, you know, 5G. And yeah, you can just buy like that. Fantastic. And what I do you think? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got something to add on. Uh, I really agree on what, what you didn't mention the sound like. Right? Um, con content storytelling is the, the best way to actually do customer engagement because um, in in five years ago, right, um, all our digital marketing is about banners, right, the square square thing that you you put in your website, right. But it now becomes a, a invisible uh, spot already for customer because there is no engagement. Right? So you need to focus on en uh, engagement if you want to basically attract uh, customer to do the first click. So, so those digital marketing talk about CTR or all, all this, right? It's, it's actually your, your goal, right? How, how do we eventually uh, create a content that can, that can uh, lead your customer into your, your portals and eventually do a, a purchase, right? It's, it's a, I can say a skill that need to be learned. Um, you, you, you can learn it through, uh, through experience, but it's going to be expensive, but do learn to, with, with someone that have experience. So, I, th I think online you, you can get a lot of those uh, those uh, training out there. Um, the same same with that, right? Back to Afi Bank, we, we are a very conventional bank, right? We we um, in terms of SME, we, we our platform that we are very focused on is SME only, and we uh, saying that, right? We also uh, try to uh, improvise like, what what can we do to basically help our customers. So so hence we come up with SME colony that we can drive our traffic back to to the customers. Right. So digital platform, I think, is the, the next thing. But, but when is it going to come? I'm uh, not sure. But digital marketing is actually the next thing to, to look into because, uh, like Gita said, the, the, it's very noisy there, but you need to be very creative in terms of how you want to attract your customer. 
Mm, right. And uh, what will be, you know, to uh, Gideon and Joshua, what will be some of the technology implementation that you have uh, done before for your business? And how does that bring value to you? Yeah. I Gideon? guess, oh, Joshua, yes. I guess everyone is talking about AI, um, but AI exists uh, in many levels. Uh, so Gideon was talking about, uh, sorry, uh, Boon was talking about. Uh, sanitizing the data, right, and and and, and making making sense of the data. So uh, when when my my viral post happened, uh, we did not have a website, an e-commerce website. Uh, so someone uh, a, a a marketplace reached out to me, a small artisanal marketplace reached out to me. Uh, he happened to be a friend, uh, Crave, uh, Crave dot co, uh, uh, and and it's, it's it's actually a platform for mom and pups. To, to just display their, you know, whatever they, they produce at home for themselves. Uh, so to have a, well, by, uh, we are probably a, 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 an established brand name and, and to put it there, it, it's simply just to help me fulfill uh, those, those crazy orders. We were taking in uh, like a thousand orders a day kind of thing, you see. So, so I did not have, now I'm starting to create my website. Uh, I mean, I, I just uh, started my website a couple of, months ago, my own e-commerce website. And, and then now we are starting to kind of analyze and make sense of the, the, the data that is that is there. You know, uh, probably y'all are, Gideon is probably light years ahead. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, segmenting and profiling uh, the customers. And, and, and one thing that we were very thankful and uh, we found out that, that there was so many repeat orders, uh, many, many repeat orders, not, uh, uh, like, like three, four, five times repeated uh, orders already. We, even within... Uh, much till now yeah okay maybe your coffee is addictive uh, we should try it is a legal drug you know <laughs> <laughs> right right okay and how about yourself Gideon you know I'm sure you have uh, something much more than just the e-commerce right what what did you invest in you know that is uh, you put a lot of money into you know um, digitalizing <laughs> uh, I, I would just I would say that um uh, it's very it's a, if if you don't know what we're doing, it's going to be expensive, lah, right? Right. So I think just now Boon mentioned there are a lot of uh, free platform out there already that you can use, and there are a lot of uh, platforms that are really uh, off the shelf that we can use. Um, uh, what we experience is that it really ultimately depends on your business, and ultimately, uh, not all you can. It, it, at least for us, our experience is uh, very hard to get. A, a cookie cutter platform that can work for us. However, what we learned along the way is that we start with um, adopting uh, one or two of these platforms that are out there first. Then we use them and um, we uh, implement them. And then we actually, it's a bit painful to use when some of the features are not, you know, uh, cannot really work properly. But then we start to learn that, hey, okay, now um, because of the uniqueness of our business, then okay, now we need this feature. Now we need uh, to integrate this way. Uh, we need to talk to another platform that way and stuff like that. So uh, then we start to build uh, connectors uh, by ourselves. Uh, if let's say we, we still want to use that, that uh, the, the uh, off-the-shelf platform. If not, then if we think that, oh, completely the thing cannot use, uh, we just clone the whole thing and then we build the whole thing by ourselves. But we didn't start from scratch, you see. We already kind of know, okay, the UI of that platform looks like that. You know, the flow of, of uh, certain things. We kind of have a framework of what, mm, you know, uh, uh, the platform can work for us. So we kind of like uh, clone certain things, but we start to implement the features that we want that caters to the needs of uh, uh, the uniqueness of the, biz of the business. So I think um, I would say that's, that's uh, what we learned along the way and something that we, we can share uh, that... Uh, don't go all out and just go gung ho and say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, build this whole thing and you know, you know, completely from from scratch. Um, yeah, I think I think we we shouldn't do that. Like, I, I can share an incident that uh, there was one time we wanted to completely migrate our e-commerce platform to something else, uh, because of a certain functionality uh, that wasn't there. Um, I'm so glad today that we didn't do that because that's going to be super heavy lifting for us to like uh, uplift everything, uproot everything and re rebuild the whole e-commerce again. Uh, but what we did is that uh, we find some workarounds and then we customize uh, with the platform that we have right now. We build our own tools, um, our own, you know, 
uh, satellite uh, you know, plugins and things like that. And uh, actually, it works so well for us and we don't have to you know, migrate out from a, a, a steady platform. So, so yeah, lah. So I, I think uh, investment we have to we have to take it uh, gradually, lah. Mm. And Boon, any advice on this for SMEs? Do you have any formula, you know, for them to, you know, think of how much percentage, you know, if I earn this amount of revenue, how much percentage should we take into digitalizing the business and growing it to the next level? Boon, any thoughts? Uh, in in terms of um like ROI, right? So the the thing that. Uh, every business needs to basically go to the basic, right? So the basic is, is your balance sheet. Uh, is it you know, when you combine it with your PL, right? It, does it does it uh, tell you the, the answer that are your product really selling, right? If if it's not, then should you acquire more more the same product, right? You should acquire those products that really sell, right? And then ne go next to the point that uh, whether your cash flow is good or not. Uh, your product sells doesn't mean your cash flow is good. Right. It's, it's all fundamental financing, right? So, so if you get those right, right, then you can think about your, your ROI. Your ROI is basically your planning, your financial planning, right? So whether you're going to get what you invested in years to come. Uh, of course, the shorter, the better, right? Those, those are basic business. So, but to, to go to that point, right, you, you need to think about how are you going to um, basically do business expansion, right? Like, like Joshua mentioned, uh, to, to, to do a business expansion, right? But those business expansion, sometimes uh, ideation can, can come with a very small cost, but sometimes it comes with a very high cost. So those are things that, uh, that SME need to think about. So I actually, uh, I want to share basically a few, a few key things that SME should take note of. Um, uh, the first thing is, of course, is you, you need to look into your, your product, right? The cost of your product. So cost of product will go up and down. So you need to be very sensitive about your cost of product. So once you have the, the, the right like the balance sheet already and you can you know which one sells, uh, then you can acquire a better product, then you can basically focus on your revenue, right? And then the next point about talking about your, your keyword business, right? If you're a conventional uh, retailer now, you're, you want to think about expanding your, your business to e-commerce, right? Start looking at any of the platform that is available out there like free or very minimal cost, right? then then you can look into how how uh, in terms of finance financial uh, support that you need, right? you can basically uh, it can be a very major uh, major uh, changes in your business, like from from A to B, right? Then you suddenly you want to skip your direction from A to C. So, but those are major major uh, direction that you, you need to think about. But if your financial is not there to uh, your fi financial is not there to support you, you, you need to start thinking about uh, who can basically support you, right? In terms of uh, you want to get a financing loan, not to basically support your your uh, your business. So those are, are things that you need to consider about if you are a conventional uh, retailer, even uh, as e-commerce e as well. And the second thing that you need to uh, think about is basically whether your business, uh, you're selling seasonal, seasonal stuff up, right? If you're selling a seasonal stuff means like uh, your, basically your, your cash, cash flow, your, your, uh, your money that you use, right, will be seasonal as well because you need to, to uh, need to fit with the requirements at, at a certain period of month, right? Then if you are, um, you are, uh, your, your cash flow is not there, right? Then you need to look into how, how am I going to find uh, sufficient short-term revenue for me, the short-term uh, money for me to basically um, support my expense of my business. Like maybe my monthly sales is like uh, 1,000, right? Suddenly my September and October will be uh, triple. But to, to basically support the triple, right? And then I need to basically get some kind of financial support. Uh, those are things that to to think about. And last, lastly, of course, if you um at a a uh, a bridge of where you you face a slowdown or a, a impending downturn, right? Um, in, in the industry that you're facing, I, I, I guess if you are in this uh, retail business, you will sense whether your business is going well or not, is going smooth or not, right? So those are anticipation of economy that that everybody need to take note of to basically uh, prepare yourself 
uh, to future proof your business. Make sure that you are always ready to uh, to to basically um, to uh, to basically uh, how to say to face the challenges that is going to 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 come to to your to your side, right? So those are the few key things that I think SME. Um, um, those SME business need to owner need to think about. Yeah. Mm, right. So um, we've, we are coming to the end of the discussion. Just one final question. Since we're talking about you know uh, cash flow, right? We talk about expansion. Capital is always an important factor. So to both of you, Gideon and Joshua, what's your strategy in raising capital? I mean, will you go by the traditional route, sales oriented? You know, go through the bank loans or source for investors, M and A or whatnot? Um, please feel free to share. Just a quick one. Start with Gideon first. Uh, Joshua, yeah. yeah, go ahead. For me, it will be a combination of uh, of, of all this. Uh. So, so it, whatever fits. Uh, 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 capital is one thing. Uh, the other thing is sometimes we take in investors because they can open doors uh, to, to, to different uh, arenas of businesses. So it will be a combination for us. Yeah. Uh, for me, actually, uh, what I really believe in is... Uh, we have to build a business that is sustainable and has a path towards profitability. Um, that, that is crucial because um, if, if we get capital injection through uh, means of investment or even loan, uh, but actually the business model is not sustainable, uh, then that is, uh, is, is, is dangerous. It's a, in a way a formula for failure, actually, right? We are scaling up the, the danger. So um, you mentioned actually, uh, is it through sales and your customers? I think that is the best, your best funders are your customers, lah. that's the best. Lah. I think like the example that Joshua mentioned, uh, that was a perfect example, right? Actually, yeah. your customers are your best funders first. Mm -hmm. that, that should be, that should be the, the, the go-to. That means your, your business model, your product, your service has to be really um, of quality. That's why uh, people is willing to pay for it because it's worth that. It's really worth it. Um, then uh, I think when it comes to certain challenges, just now Boon talked about maybe cash flow, maybe a, uh, maybe certain capex that you need to invest in uh, for the short term because you need to move the business to another level. Then yes, you can think about loan or investors that can open doors. Uh, so that's, that's how I would view funding. All right. Thank you so much, speakers, for your time today. It's a great joy hearing from you and your insights. And for those of you who have questions, please do type in your questions and we'll get into the Q&A session shortly.